Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll read a book by Soda Katsuhiro titled Why I Make Documentaries on Observational Filmmaking, published by Via Industrie. Ten Commandments on Observational Filmmaking 1. No research 2. No meetings with subjects 3. No scraps 4. Roll the camera yourself 5. Shoot for as long as possible 6. Cover small areas deeply 7. Do not set up a theme or goal before editing 8. No narration, superimposed titles or music 9. Use long takes 10. Pay for the production yourself What is documentary? Why do I make documentaries? As a professional documentary filmmaker, as imperfect as I may be, you might assume that I had answered those questions long ago. But the truth is, it's precisely those most fundamental of matters that are the hardest to figure out. For example, is there anyone you know who's living life having solved questions like what is a person or why do we live? I don't think so, at the very least, I certainly haven't. Even so, I go on living every day. Making documentaries has been my occupation since 1997. If you include television, up to now I've made around 50 documentary films as a professional filmmaker. However, I still don't know the answer to questions like what is documentary or why do I make them, and I can easily envision myself at the end of my days feebly cranking a camera and mumbling, hmm, I still don't get it, before departing this earth. However, even if there are things I don't understand about documentaries, I don't think that's any reason to give up on looking into them. Even if you don't understand their full nature, there are definitely things that can only be called documentarish. There is a certain non-infrequent ecstasy that comes from watching films by great documentarists or creating your own films that can only be described as the pleasure of documentary. That's exactly why I am fascinated by documentaries and why I keep creating them, even if at times they can seem to take years off my life. Readers, I suspect you too have been attracted by the mysterious appeal of documentaries and that's why you decided to pick up this book. The truth is, even speaking as someone who makes them, documentaries really do have a charm that's hard to wrap your mind around. Perhaps the core of their appeal lies in their ability to pull you in totally unexpected, head-spinning directions, or perhaps it's the way they bring you to various places without knowing your ultimate destination, leaving you with a feeling of overwhelming helplessness, as strange as that might sound. My latest work is a documentary film called Peace, 75 minutes, 2010, but at the outset I had no intention of making it. The trigger for making the film was when I received a request in August 2009 from a film festival in South Korea to produce a short film about peace and coexistence. But at the time I received the request, I had no desire to shoot anything and just let the offer sit there for a while. However, in September of that year, my wife's grandmother's health took a turn for the worst, and deciding to shoot a film about her final days on Earth, I returned from New York to Japan with my wife. That step taken, the wheels of fate began to turn of their own volition, to put it rather grandly. But when it came to making a film about her grandmother, her relatives were against it, and, regretfully, I was forced to give up the idea. 
However, in the depth of my despair, I began listlessly watching my father-in-law as he fed stray cats and suddenly came up with the idea for peace. My initial plan was to make a 15-minute short about peace and coexistence within feline society that would fit the request from the film festival. But as I shot various scenes, the range of my camera's focus widened and before I knew it I had a 75-minute full-length feature. What's more, after completion, the film was invited to various international film festivals and I was able to travel to those festivals alongside it. The film was loaded with prizes like Audience Awards and Best Documentary Awards, was given a nationwide release in Japan and even led to the writing of this book, I could never have imagined it. I initially started making the film as a kind of distraction, and even at its completion I was never fully convinced as to whether it was interesting or not. But now it's become an important film for me, an essential part of my life history itself. Moreover, I can't help but feel a sort of masochistic pleasure in the particular twists and turns it took me on that were far beyond my control. When I think about it, my first documentary film, Campaign, 120 Minutes, 2007, which went behind the scenes of a Liberal Democratic Party election campaign, also originated with a coincidence. Documentaries are built from a series of mechanisms and coincidences, and if just one goes away, the whole thing can come crumbling down. Such is this transient art form. When most people think about films, what likely comes to mind are meticulously detailed projects that take years to prep and involve near unfathomable budgets. In truth, this isn't limited to fictional features. There are a great many documentary films planned with detailed scripts and meetings. Films cost an enormous amount of money and involve the participation of a huge number of people, so it makes sense that these methods would be employed by such large enterprises. However, I personally feel very uncomfortable with the way documentaries are planned out, which seems to be the general method worldwide. The more you plan in order to avoid failure, the more you end up failing. In other words, all that planning makes your documentary less interesting. That's what I have thought for a long time. The appeal of documentaries comes precisely from their uncertain, transient nature. The moments when, as a creator, your expectations and assumptions break down in the face of the impact of raw reality, when your deepest intentions are betrayed, when your existing views of the world melts before you, that's when things start to get interesting. Before I shoot, I don't do research on my subject, or write a script, or have meetings with the people I will be shooting. I work basically alone, spontaneously pointing my camera at the reality in front of my eyes. I call the films I create with that method observational cinema. They are an attempt to break free from the style of creation that breeds safe, predictable documentaries and go back to basics, to return to the method of documentary filmmaking that leads you on an unpredictable adventure. Of the three films I have made so far, Peace in particular had absolutely no connection to anything resembling a plan. I still barely have the feeling that I made the film. To put it one way, it feels more like something compelled me to make it. With that in mind, and I realize it might be presumptuous to say this as the person who made it, 
It's a film in which the creator's ego is constrained to the fullest extent possible and in which the essence of observational cinema is at its purest. To put it in other words, looking back at the process behind that film may bring me a step closer to answering those unanswerable questions. What is documentary and why do I make them? That's my hope. Of course, just as you can't predict how documentaries will turn out when you are shooting them, I'm not sure whether I will succeed here either. Regardless, the process of moving forward is, both for me and for you, a certain kind of adventure. Why am I embarking on such an adventure? Because it sounds interesting. It's the same hunch I have felt before shooting each of the documentaries I have made so far. I hope you will join me on this journey without destination, keeping a foundationless feeling of hope in your hearts. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.